Let's go and turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And this month we've been blessed because we've been spending time in God's Word talking about value and what, uh, what we value and the things that we should value in this world. There are are so many things in this world that people value. I mean, you look, uh, you look at your neighbors, you look at your community, uh, at, at our state, at our country, at the world. Uh, you turn on TV, you see the messages that are coming uh, forth through media and through commercials and, and, and trying to sell their product and their way of life, uh, making it seem valuable to you and I so that, that uh, we can invest and, and purchase whatever they're pushing. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. So, there's so much that people value in this world. But as people of God, we have to understand that we have to look in God's word and we have to understand that we need to have uh, our perspective correct according to God's word and we have to value the right things in life. If, if we want to be blessed in this world, we're going to have to place value on the right things and the things that maybe we've been uh, investing in that aren't, that aren't godly or that aren't benefiting us, we have to really take a look at those things and look at God's word and see what he says. And we're going to read that... Um, that scripture, 1 Timothy 4, 8, this is a series scripture that we've been uh, just focusing on this month. The Bible says this, 1 Timothy 4, 8, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Now comparing, you know, the physical, the natural, you know, uh, the things of this world. I mean, there's no comparison when you compare it with godliness and with the spiritual. The Bible says physical training, yes, it's good, but training for godliness is much better because it has eternal rewards. And that's what we're doing here uh, this evening. You know, I look out into this auditorium, and I look at the seats, and I look at uh, the, my, my brothers and sisters who are, who are here and have been here for, for years serving God. You know, and it shows me such an example to my life on what you value, how you're being steadfast. And I know life is not perfect. I know we go through situations in our lives personally, uh, internally, uh, with our families, at work, uh, through, through different life situations. We all go through things. But here we are tonight. Just look to your left and right. There's someone that has gone through a trial, but they made a decision today that, yes, I'm going to go to the house of God no matter what. Little do we know sometimes what people have gone through the, today just to, get, just to get through these doors. We don't know. But you're here tonight, and, and that's a blessing. And we're going to be talking this evening about consistency. Praise God. So we started this series off, uh, and we, start, we talked about valuing the work that God's doing in our life. We started our series off with that. And then uh, Pastor Dan preached uh, an amazing message on valuing prayer. Val we have to keep a value on prayer always, always we have to value prayer. And then uh, Brother Manny also preached an amazing message on valuing the church. Praise God what God's doing here in the local body, in, in the church, within our, our church. We thank God for that. And so tonight we're going to be talking about valuing consistency. Now what is consistency? I want to give you the definition here. The achievement of a level of performance that does not vary greatly in quality over time. I'll read it one more time. The achievement of a level of performance that does not vary greatly in quality over time. Now, why talk about this topic of consistency in, in our lives? I believe because it's, it's the answer to, to us getting to where we want to be. If we want breakthrough, if we want to see God do great things in our life, if we want to achieve our goals and our dreams and desires, uh, even if we, we could even apply this uh, in all areas of our life, at work, professionally, if, if, you want to, if you want to excel at anything in life, it's going to take consistency. It's going to take you and I uh, uh, holding on to that achievement, that level of performance over time so that it doesn't vary. Consistency is something that's so important. We have to be consistent. We have to be consistent. Consistency is a critical driver for success. Being consistent means dedicating yourself to your goals and staying focused on the things and activities to achieve your goals. It requires a long-term commitment from you and involves sustained effort in doing actions repeatedly until you achieve your goals. 
doing actions repeatedly until you achieve your goals. And again, we start with the kingdom of God because I believe that God wants to bless us and it's gonna take consistency. And we're gonna talk about that a little later, being consistent in the right things. But again, you could apply this to every area of your life. Perhaps you're in this place and you're trying to get out of debt. You know what the answer is? I mean, God can snap his fingers and God can clear that debt, debt off. But until he do, does that, the answer is for you to consistently pay that thing down. Pay more than you, than you spend, right? That's, that's the answer. It's consistency. You could do well for a week. You could do well for a month, for a couple months. But if you and I are not consistent in that area, then you're never going to pay it down, for example. If you want to excel at work, then you have to be consistent in your performance. You have to be that employee that is going to bring value to that comp company. So it applies to everything in our lives. If we want to achieve anything worthwhile in this world, in Christ, we're going to have to learn to be consistent. Consistency is a path to seeing things accomplished in our lives. See, it's great to start things. How many know it's great to start something, right? New Year's resolutions. It's great to, to set goals in your life. It's great to, to enter into a program maybe that's going to help better your life. But unless you and I are consistent, unless we finish that thing and see it all the way through, we're not going to get to where we want to be. It's great to start things. But it's better to finish it. Can you say amen? And the Bible says that, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. Finishing is better than starting. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. Praise God. So let's pray uh, this evening. Let's ask God to help us. I believe that God wants to do something new. I believe that God wants to bring change in our lives, and he wants to help us to overcome those things in our lives that we've been maybe frustrated with, and he wants us to be consistent. So let's pray. Let's ask him to help us uh, this evening. If you could bow your heads with me and agree. Hallelujah. Father, we're so grateful this evening, God. I thank you, Lord God, for your children who have, who have come out uh, to worship you uh, tonight, Father God. I just pray that, Lord, as we gather in your name, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to understand the importance of consistency, God, in our lives. Father, we know that you have good things for us, God. We know that you have so many promises for us, Father God, and I pray that you would help us to be consistent as we as we chase those things, as we chase after you, Father God, as we seek you in prayer, Father God, in fasting, Father God, as we seek you in all things, Lord, that we would be consistent. Holy Spirit, help us. Order our steps in your word, Father God, and we're just so grateful for all that you're going to do tonight, God, and I pray for my brothers and sisters here and those that are also uh, tuning in online, anyone that is burdened uh, tonight, that is downcast for whatever reason, Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would encourage them, Father God, that, that Father God, that you would give them hope, Father God, knowing that in you all things are possible, Father, and we're so grateful. We're so grateful for the miracles that you're going to do, God, for the miracles that you're doing right now, God. God, we thank you, Father God, for all that you're going to do. We ask in Jesus' name. And we all say, amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. God's going to move tonight. I believe that breakthrough is coming for you tonight, for myself as well. Ecclesiastes 7, 8. Finishing is better than starting. Finishing is better than starting. So that's what we have to keep in perspective, church, that as we are consistent, that we have our eyes fixed on the finish line, on the end goal. Again, it's great to, to, to check in. It's great to start something. But with God's help and with God's strength, we have to finish. We're in a race in this place, in our salvation. In this life that we live, we're in a race. And God is encouraging us and instructing us to finish this race, to run it until the very end. It does us no good if we don't finish the race. We have to finish. So as we talk about consistency this evening, for the first thing that we have to start with is we have to look up to the Lord, and we have to understand that, that God is consistent. He is a God of consistency. We look to him, we look to Jesus, our, the author and finisher of our faith, and, and he is our prime example in all things, and he is and was consistent in this world, in his ministry, and also in his love for us. Hebrews 13, 8, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. Aren't you glad for, the, for that news? Amen? I'm glad for that because this world is changing so fast. 
Things that are trending today, tomorrow they're going to be out of style. Things that are popular today, tomorrow they're going to be looked, uh, they're going to be frowned upon. Uh, today, the things that are, that are so popular in this world, tomorrow it can change in an instant. It just depends what people feel like, what they like, what they're looking for. But thank you, Jesus, that his word doesn't change, church. What you read and what ministered to you 20, 30 years ago, what helped change your life through God's word is the same today. It has the same power today. The same truth that God ministered to you many, many, many years ago is the same today. The same laws that God gave us through his word, the same guidelines, the same instruction, the same truth that, that was applicable 50 years ago is still applicable and true today. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. We have something that we could set our course to. We have a compass that doesn't change. It's God's word. God is consistent, always consistent. The Bible says in Romans 5.19, For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, many were made righteous. And here talking about Jesus, because of his faithfulness, because of his consistency in obedience to his Father, we're now able to be obedient to the Father. We're, not, we're now able to have relationship with our loving Father. Why? Because of Jesus' consistency. He was tempted in all things, all the things that you and I have ever been tempted with, Jesus went through those things. Yet he was without sin. Yet he stood for truth, yet he was perfect and righteous. And because of that, we're able to be obedient. We're able to be righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Now we have to first look up, as I, as I said, when we talk about consistency to the author and finisher of our faith. Now the Bible says in Revelations 19, 11, Now I saw heaven opened. This is at the end here. And behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called what? faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. What is the word of God? Jesus has many names, wonderful counselor, prince of peace, all these things, right? But here, so powerfully, this scripture calls Jesus two things, faithful and true, faithful. He was and is faithful. He is always faithful. He's faithful to his father's tasks. He's faithful to, to the calling in his life. When he came and he, he walked here on the earth for 33 years, he was faithful to what, the, to what his father told him to do. He is faithful and true. He doesn't change. He's our example. 1 Corinthians 13, 7, talking about the love of God, talking about love. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. What I'm reading here in the scripture is that love, the love of God is faithful. It's consistent through everything. Love never gives up. So God is consistent. That's his character. You're here tonight because he's consistent. You know, there was a time that you were running from God. There was a time that you were pushing off the conviction of God. You were doing things your own way. And don't you thank God for his grace that you're able to be here in the presence of, of his children tonight? I am. Thank you, Jesus. Man, God could have, could have justly just, just, just pushed us to the side and snuffed us out because we were being disobedient and we were doing things according to our own terms. And we were taking his love and we were just casting it off, saying, God, I want to do things my way. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that through God's love that he was consistent, that the Holy Spirit consistently reached out for me, that the Holy Spirit consistently was convicting me, was calling me, was drawing me in into the house of God, into the kingdom of God. It was that consistency that saved me. Thank you, Jesus. And it saved you too. God sending different people in your life to minister the good news to you. It was a process. There's a period of time where everything was right and God brought you through certain situations and circumstances where you were finally ready to say yes. Count yourself blessed to have that chance because there are many that have departed this world that have had a chance for righteousness to serve God that they didn't take that, 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 that opportunity and they entered into eternity. We gotta thank God that he is consistent. Now we look in God's word and we we see a couple examples here that I want to spend a moment and, and look at. 
that God values consistency in our lives. He desires that you and I would be consistent. Now there's a scripture in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. As you turn there, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And in the word of God, Jesus taught many things, and many times he, he taught it through parables. He gave examples and illustrations so that people could understand what he was talking about. They could get the picture. And here, here's a picture here in Luke 18, uh, verse 1. And this is a parable of the persistent widow and the judge. And the Bible says this, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Consistency, right? There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. Okay, so we're getting a picture of what type of judge this was. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly. Again, we're talking about consistency. Look at these key words that are jumping out. Repeatedly, okay? Saying, and then we're still in verse 3, saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. In verse 4, the judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> How many of you have ever been there? Kids are persistent, right? Kids are constant. Can you say amen? And they'll just ask and ask and ask. And this is the example. This is what we're, what we're seeing here. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting, uh, will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? So here we get a perfect picture of, of a judge who was unjust, who doesn't fear God, who doesn't care about people, right? This is not the kind of judge that you would want to stand in front of. So we have the judge right there, and then we have the, the, the widow, the persistent widow, and she had a need. She, she, she wanted justice between her and her enemies, so she went to the judge, and she constantly, constantly, constantly knocked at his door, and she went after him. Now what is God teaching us here? That it's going to take consistency for you and I to get the breakthrough that we want. Perhaps you're in a place in your life today, and, and I don't know what's going on in your life, but there's an area, or there's a need that you have, and there's something that, that hasn't yet taken place, and, and perhaps you've been seeking God about it for, for a month, for a couple months, but God's instruction to us is that until we get that answer, we have to be consistent. Until you get that breakthrough, you have to be consistent. That's God's way. It's going to take perseverance. Until you want to get that, that debt paid off, you're going to have to continue to pay that thing off. I believe that we have family members that we want to see uh, in, the, in the house of God sitting right next to us, right? We have perhaps, perhaps you have children that, that aren't serving God. They're, they're doing things their own way, but you have to consistently, constantly pray for them. Until they're here with you, you have to pray for them. You have to believe. You have to be consistent. That's the only way. And it's tiring. Man, be consistent. It's tiring. And I don't know about you, you know, sometimes in my life I get motivated for certain things, but, you know, over the years I, I've, I've come to know myself, and I know sometimes there can be, there, there's ebbs and flows of life, right? I'm motivated about it today, but, but here comes a trial, here comes a circumstance, um, you know, here comes something out of the blue, and, and it, can, it can test our resolve. But if I'm going to be successful if I'm going to achieve what God has for me, if I'm going to get to where I want to be, I'm going to have to be consistent. I'm going to have to push through. And see, it's those times when you're tempted to stop and to just let up on the gas a little bit. Perhaps you're not seeing the change that you want. We've all been there. At work, in your family, in your relationships, which are going to be spoken about next week. In your ministry, perhaps with your health, 
It takes consistency, and, and, and I'll tell you what, I understand that this topic is not the easiest thing to be consistent. Again, it's, it's easy to do for a little while. It's easy to do that in January, right, with the, with the resolution. It's easy to do it. it you know, come, come the first couple weeks, man, you're on fire. You're doing good. Whatever it is you set your heart to, you, 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 you've stuck to it. But, but what about when February comes or March and April? What about when, when, when you don't feel like doing it? What about when you get some, some news that just kind of goes contrary? What happens then? See, church, then, that's where perseverance comes in. That's where your consistency will really pay off. Sometimes you're not going to see the change taking place right away. Sometimes it's going to look like you're going in the opposite direction, but you have to be consistent. I have to be consistent. Perhaps in, in the realm of, of, of with your children, you know, you're, you're doing your best to be that parent that God's called you to be, and, and you're trying to stick to your guns, and sometimes it seems like things are just getting wor worse. What's God's instruction to us? Stick to your guns. Hold on to the truth. Do things as God's told you to do them, and, and change is going to come, church. Change is going to come. Your breakthrough is going to come. That healing is going to come. That salvation for your, for your unsaved loved ones is going to come. It's going to happen. That breakthrough in your ministry is going to come. You and I just have to be consistent just as the persistent widow was here. She got her answer. Thank you, Jesus. See, in this passage here, you know, it's sometimes how it is when we, we read through scriptures, right? We read through the word of God. I mean, you can read a paragraph and, and in context, you know, five years have gone by and, and we read it like this. And so we read about the, the widow here, the persistent widow, and we think that, okay, maybe she went to that judge just two times and he, and he gave in. But I don't think that was the case. Who knows what amount of time passed here. But that's not what's important. What's important is her perseverance and that until she got her answer, she never gave up. You're trying to seek breakthrough. You're, trying to, you're believing God for breakthrough. You have to be consistent. It's the only way. Now, there's another example here in, in 2 Kings chapter 13. If we could turn there, 2 Kings chapter 13. This portion of Scripture here is about one of the kings of Israel. And Israel, they had, sometimes they had righteous kings that, that, that sought God, that, that adhered to the ways of God for, for the nation of Israel. But then you had other kings that, that came, and, and they did, the Bible says they did evil in the sight of the Lord. And there was this king here, and his name was uh, Jehoash. And the Bible goes on to even say, I'm just giving you some context, that, that this, this king here, uh, in verse 11 of chapter 13, it says, uh, first King, uh, Second Kings, I'm sorry, 2 Kings 13, 11, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. So here was this king. He, didn't even, he wasn't even doing uh, righteously for God. He was, he was an evil king. He was doing things that, that were evil in the Lord's sight. But here we get a picture of God's grace and power in his life because this king, and they, they were surrounded by enemies, and there was a nation here and a people called Aram, and they were constantly like a thorn in Israel's side, and they were constantly at war with them. So here this king, Jehoash, he gets news that, that Elisha, the prophet, the powerful prophet of God who walked with Elijah previous to him, uh, he was on his deathbed, and he was, he was nearing the end of his days. And Elisha was a powerful prophet there in the nation of Israel. So this king, Jehoash, he gets news that, that Elisha's days are numbered and that he's going he's gonna to go away pretty soon. He's going to pass. So 2 Kings 13 verse 14, we, we see the story here. When Elisha was in his last illness, King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. We're getting a picture here of, of how this was impacting this king. My father, my father, I see the chariots and charioteers of Israel. He cried. Elisha told him, get a bowl Get a bow, a bow and some arrows. And in this passage here, as we're reading, you know, the, the heading here of this passage in, in my Bible says, Elisha's final prophecy. So let's see what's taking place here. So Elisha said, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did what he was told. Elisha told him, listen to this, put your hands on the bow. And Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. And he commanded, open that eastern window. And he opened it. Then he said, shoot. And he shot an arrow. And Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram. For you will 
completely conquer the Arameans at Aphek. Okay, so we're getting the picture here. So there's a prophecy that Elisha is speaking over this king. So praise God. That's good news for the king. Now listen, listen here in verse 18. Then he said, now pick up, the, uh, pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck them, uh, struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. So powerful is, is the scripture as we see here, God painting a picture of the value of consistency. If God gives you, a, you and I a task, if he instructs us to do anything, we should have the heart, the attitude, the resolve to keep doing that thing, just keep doing it. If God's called you to be righteous, you continue to be righteous. If, if perhaps you fall on your face and you get back up and you continue to be righteous. If God has called you to pray for your enemies, you continue to pray for your enemies, even if they misuse you, even if they mistreat you, even if they say bad things about you, you continue to pray for your enemies. There's no end to it until we get to heaven. If you're believing God for healing, continue to seek God for that healing. Continue to follow the instruction that God's given you for that healing. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. Is it going to look sometimes that things are going contrary to what you're praying for? Yes. Many times that will take place, but that's where our consistency, our persis persistence and resolve has to kick in, church. We have to be consistent in all things. It's an attitude. It's a way of life. It's a way of thinking. It's something that we have to take in, and we have to begin to let that work in our life. And in Christ, I will tell you, in Christ, there's victory. Can you say amen? amen. With, with whatever effort and strength that we have, as long as we're consistent, God will strengthen us. If, we, if he's called us to serve, we do it with the strength that he provides. We're consistent with it. You'll feel like quitting. You'll feel like giving up. You'll feel like throwing in the towel. If God's called, God's called us to work with people, there are going to be people that are easy to work with. Praise God. We thank God for those. But there are people like you and I that are difficult to work with. But God's called us to work with them, to love them, to reach out to them, to, 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 to welcome them with a smile, to love them. God's called us to do that. We have to be consistent. And in that is blessing, church. Thank you, Jesus. So we understand that God is consistent. God is faithful. He is faithful and true. We understand that God values consistency, and we read that here with the scripture of the persistent widow and also about Elisha's final prophecy with this king. Keep doing it. Be steadfast. And lastly, I want to look at the fact that we have to be consistent in the right things. We all know how to be consistent in the wrong things. Can you say amen? We do. We know how to, it's not hard to be lazy. We know how to be consistently lazy, to, to sit up on the couch and put our feet up. But if we're trying to better ourselves, you know, there's a time and place for rest. I get it. To recharge your batteries, I get it. I understand. But it's not a way of life for the believer. Can you say amen? It's not a, it's not a soldier's way of life. That God's, God's called us soldiers. Amen. So God's called us to be consistent in the right things. Because we know how to be consistent in the bad things, but we have to be consistent in the right things. Now, I have a few that, I want, that I've listed here that I want to look at, but before I do that, I want to look at a few enemies, a few enemies of consistency in, in our life. And one of the biggest things I think that, that hinder our, our consistency is, is, is a faulty way of thinking sometimes. Now, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. So here's an example, right? And then where our thinking comes into play. Perhaps you're doing well in life. Perhaps you've, 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 you've started something in your life that is, that is benefiting you, that is blessing you, that, that God's called you to do. And you set your mind on finishing that task. And perhaps it's a, it's a program. Perhaps it's a diet. Perhaps it's ministry. Perhaps it's, it's something different. Perhaps it's a project at work. Whatever it may be. But if one faulty thought comes through your mind and you and I let it take root, it can totally and completely derail our progress in that area. If you're, if you're doing your best to, to better your marriage, perhaps, let's look at that. 
And God's called you and instructed you, as we're going to talk about in a moment, to, 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 to love your wife, love your husband, you know, love your spouse, to, to give yourself to them and to continue to, to, to be an example to them and to, to love on them always. But what happens when, when we're offended? What happens when, when we have a thought and we remember something they said to us years ago? If we're not careful, it can derail us. See, our thinking, if it's not grounded in God's word, if we're not taking on the helmet of salvation, you're thinking one thought. The Bible calls them fiery darts from the enemy. And I'm thinking about you brothers in the men's home, man. I, I thank God for you. I'm blessed because of what, what God's doing in your life. And you've entered in. You made a decision for however amount of time that you've decided to be there. But you know the blessing, right, is to stay the course. Sometimes we're going to be tempted in things to, to sometimes maybe we're offended or, or we're, we're doing something where we think like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm better this, than this or I shouldn't be doing this. But if you stay the course and you're consistent, you're going to find blessing. God is building a foundation in your life. You have to stay, stay consistent. God has great things. Man, God has great things for you guys. I know you guys know that. I know you understand that. But I just want to reaffirm that today. Stay the course. Let God do what he's doing in your life. Don't throw in the towel. No matter what, and God's going to bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So sometimes our thinking can affect us. Sometimes what other people say can derail our progress. You've set your heart to do what is right, but here comes a comment. Here comes a naysayer, perhaps, out of left field. And if we're not careful, if we let those things take root, they could derail our consistency, and we could say, man, what's the use? See, but we don't do it for, for accolades of people. Can you say amen? We don't serve for the approval of men and women, but we do it unto the Lord. We have to be consistent. No matter what others say, we have to be consistent in the right things, in loving other people, in serving God, and, and in seeking a life of righteousness and purity of sacrifice, of dedication to your ministry, to God, to the house of God, as we learned last week. See, the Bible says in Luke 17, 1, offenses must come. They're going to come, man. You're going to get offended. People are going to say things to you, and you're going to be like, what? Where did that come from? Why did they say that? And, and then your, our minds are going to start running, right? And if we're not careful, if we don't put on the brakes, that, that, that running mind will just take you right out of, of your consistency and your progress. Why? Because someone offended you. This is real stuff that happens. And this is twofold. This should help us strive to be people that are careful with our words because words are spirit. We should understand that we, we need to lift up our brothers and sisters. The things that we speak, if we're going to speak the truth, what does the Bible say? Speak it in love. You know, some of us think that we have... We have a license to just try to put everybody on check and, and, and we're the Holy Ghost Sheriff and we're just correcting this person and that person. And God's called us to correct everybody. But are you doing it in love? Have you taken it to prayer? Husbands, wives, what about in the realm of marriage? I know sometimes we could be so easy to point out each other's faults, but are you encouraging them? Are you motivating them? Are you helping them? Is it spoken in love? See, offenses will come. And the Bible goes on to say in that scripture, woe from who those offenses do come from. So sometimes consistency is affected, one, through our faulty thinking, if it's not according to God's word. Secondly, through what others say. And thirdly, through just plain weariness. Sometimes we get tired. We're at midweek service sometimes, right? You got to... Man, we're halfway there through the week. You might have had a hard day, man, and you just, you just got to shake it off sometimes, you know? You got to shake it off. You just got to gotta re-motivate yourself. You got to say, I'm going to go to the house of God today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worship God with, with the children of God. I'm going to continue to let God do a work in my life. Yes, I'm tired. I'm weary. I had a long day. Who knows what you went through, but you're here in the house of God. Sometimes weariness is an en enemy to your consistency. We're human. We're flesh and blood. Psalm 73, uh, 73, 26, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Thank you, Jesus. 
So even when your flesh fails, when your heart fails, sometimes you're on the mountaintop, man, you feel the most motivated out of anybody. Nothing's going to stop you. But sometimes we're in the valley low and we have to tell ourselves this. Even when my flesh and my heart fail, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God, with your strength, I could do it. God, with your strength, I could go on another 10, 20, 30 years, whatever you're going to give me, God, with whatever you've given me, I'm going to do it by your strength. And with that, we can accomplish everything that he's called us to do as we prepare to close here. We've heard the term showing up's half the battle, right? I read a, a, a cool post here. It says, show up. When the odds are against you, show up. When in doubt, show up. When you're tired, show up. Showing up is half the battle. When you don't feel like it, show up. Show up to your ministry. When you don't feel like going to work, show up there to your job. When you don't feel like uh, being an encouragement, encourage someone. When you don't feel like praying, get up and pray. Show up. Showing up is half the battle. We have to show up. Spiritually, we have to show up. Get up and do it. We have to get up and do it. We're not always going to feel like doing it, but we have to do it. So we have to be consistent in the right things. I'm going to run through these things here. We have to be consistent in prayer. If you're taking notes, here are some scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Never stop praying. Be consistent in prayer, which we learned about a couple weeks ago with Pastor Dan. Never stop praying. Praying is, is everything. We have to pray. Be consistent in prayer. If you want to be blessed, be consistent in generosity. Proverbs 3, 27. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. If you want to be blessed, be consistent in generosity. Thank you, Jesus. If you want... A beautiful marriage, if, if you want a beautiful marriage, you want to reap the blessings of a beautiful marriage, be consistent in loving your spouse. Ephesians 5, 25 through 30, we know that scripture. Husband, this means loves your, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Each and every day you have to purpose in your heart. I want to bless marriage, so I have to purpose in my heart to do this. Each and every day I have to be consistent. You want a healthy heart? Be consistent in forgiveness. Matthew 18, 22, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. That's the, time, the amount of times that we should forgive others. Forgive. You want a healthy heart? You want a clean heart? Be consistent in forgiveness. You want that promotion at work? You want to excel and be an asset to your workplace? Be consistent at work. Colossians 3, 23 through 24, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. You want that promotion? Keep working hard. Be consistent. Show up on time. Leave on time. Not early, okay? Show up on time. Leave on time. Be that worker that God's called you to be, and people are going to take notice of you and your attitude. They're going to take notice. They are. You want to be Christ-like? Be consistent in ministry and in serving. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. My dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for you that have made it out here tonight. I know there are many that wish they could be here that are tuning in online. We miss you. Find your way back here. I thank God, though, that we're here in the presence of God physically. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for, for the ministry workers that are, that are serving. Isn't it quiet in here? Thank you, Jesus, for the ministry workers, right? They're there at their post, man. They're watching our kids. They're teaching them the things of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to all our ministry workers and our children's ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Worship team, if you can make your way up. So as we wind this down, church, let's take inventory in our lives and ask ourselves where we, can, where we need to be more consistent in our lives. What have we perhaps, what areas have we let the weeds grow and we've, We've, we've put those things to the wayside. Has it been prayer? Has it been witnessing, sharing the good news? Has it been your faithfulness to church, perhaps? Has it been uh, being a loving spouse to your husband, to your wife? There's all areas in our lives that we all have to examine, each and every one of us. And the Holy Spirit will reveal those things to us, and the Holy Spirit will give us the strength and will help us to change in those areas that we need to change. Thank you, Jesus, for his Holy Spirit. Amen. He's, con he's continuously leading us and guiding us. So I believe that God wants the best for us, church. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. He wants the best for you. He wants you to excel, to achieve. He wants you to, to, to fulfill everything that he has for your life. But we're going to have to consistently follow him, church. And it's a daily decision.
We have to put into practice what we've learned through the Word of God. This is the only way. Consistency. And I close with this scripture, Luke 9, 62. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. God's called us to be workers and laborers in the kingdom. And God takes no pleasure in those that have started it and put their hand to the plow and, and for whatever reason they've, they've relinquished their duty as a Christian, as a man and a woman of God. Because they're tired, perhaps because we've been offended, perhaps because someone said something to us or someone did something that hurt us or stabbed us in the back. We've taken our hand off the plow and we said, I'm done. And if we're honest with ourselves, we could all be tempted to do that. But God will give us strength, church. And I believe the answer is being consistent one day at a time. You made a good decision to be here tonight. You made a good decision. And if by God's grace we get to wake up tomorrow to another day, you're going to have another day to do it all over again. To be that faithful employee. To be that loving husband or wife to be that that faithful servant in the kingdom of God to be that parent that God's called you to be to be that worker that God's called you to be to be that son and that daughter that God's called you to be it's a daily decision you have to decide today God I'm going to do it all over again it's not easy perhaps you're going through some things and and, and you, you can't picture doing this for, you know, serving God for another 5, 10, 20 years. Don't worry about that. God's there in the future. He has that all taken care of. You worry about today. You worry about being that parent, that godly parent today. You worry about being that, that godly husband and wife today. That godly guardian that perhaps gets tired because of the calling that God has in your life. Just worry about today. Do it today. God's going to give you the strength for today to, to, to do it. And when tomorrow comes, he's going to give you the strength. His grace is there for tomorrow. And when Friday comes, his grace is there for Friday. When Saturday, Sunday, all these days come, his grace is there. Just take it one day at a time. And I believe that's the wisdom that Jesus gave us. Don't worry about tomorrow, he says, because there's enough to worry about today. Isn't that true? Man, there's enough to worry about today, church. Don't worry about tomorrow. Be faithful with today. Be consistent. And we're going to get that much closer to being where we want to be. Do you receive that tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God praise. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight, God, for your grace. Holy Spirit, for your mercy. We thank you for your wonderful work in our life. Hallelujah. If I could have every head bowed, every eye closed in this place.